Did you know that Uncluttered and Unfiltered is a passion project created to reach and connect a community of women over 50? Growing production and promotion costs can be a challenge, and your support means the world. When you join our Patreon bonus club, you'll have access to a ton of otherwise unavailable video content, plus commercial-free episodes and a private chat community where Christine and I will answer any questions about the upcoming series, Organizing Eden, which is really for all of us. And while they last, we'll send every new member a let it go and don't look back tote bag. For just $5 a month, you'll be helping us grow this incredible sisterhood. And if that's not possible, hey, we get it. Truly, the most incredible way you can support us is just by telling one friend about Uncluttered and Unfiltered. And thank you. We love that you're here. Uncluttered and Unfiltered is supported by Hearts for Minds. Can you imagine waiting 11 years to get screened for cancer? On average, people with mental health issues experience an 11-year delay between symptoms and seeking help. And close to two-thirds of mental illnesses go untreated. Hearts for Minds promotes healthy lives by promoting mental health education, facilitating early identification, and connecting people to treatment. Are you ready to learn more? Go to heartsforminds.org for more information. Welcome to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast urging you to let it go and don't look back with nationally acclaimed professional organizer, Christine Stone, and self-proclaimed hot damn mess radio and TV personality, Eden Kendall. Welcome everybody to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast for women over 50. My name is Eden Kendall, and this is Christine Stone. Christine Stone is a professional organizer. I am a professional dang mess. And we have some episodes, <laughs> one of which you probably heard very recently, where we have a whole series where Christine is getting me organized. So we invite you to make sure you're checking those out if you're somebody who wants to play along at home. Yes. Because everything you're telling me and instructing me through, you've also created it in a manner where people can participate too. Yes, absolutely. It'll be a very... I feel informative series, emotional, but rewarding. Interactive, too. Yes. So we want you to know Yes. That. We invite you to participate. So today we have, it's interesting, like some days we have these heavy topics and we have these guests and we make sure uh, that you are completely aware of some health issues that you might face or emotional issues that you might face. This one is a little more like a check-in. Just yes. A, just a check-in to talk about some things that have been going on with us and Find out what's been going on with you. And right about now, a lot of you guys are experiencing something that we went through already called empty nest syndrome. Little birdies are flying away and, or maybe they just have. And Christine, what one piece of wisdom do you have for our friends who are going through this for the first time? I have a couple things, but the first one is embrace what you're going through. Just sit with it, be sad about it. Do what you need to do to get through it. And then I guarantee in a couple of weeks, you pick yourself back up like you do with anything else in your life and say, I've done my job. Now it's time to move on and live my life and let them live their life. So that's one of my bits of advice. What about you? My bit of advice, first of all, I definitely agree. You should not try to skate over the pain. No, It's important to feel what you feel. Yeah. I do think it's not a bad idea. If there's something you've been thinking of doing for a long time, that's a bigger project. Like, for example, for us, it was actually downsizing and moving. That's a, well, I don't necessarily recommend that because that made my, our daughter, it just happened that way. And our daughter was super ticked off. Like, I leave the house and you're going to move. And now I don't have my childhood bedroom to come home right. to. So I don't necessarily recommend that, but just having a big project that's going to take a lot of energy and give you butterflies, like something you're very excited about. Maybe it's a trip somewhere that you know that one day you wanted to take, or maybe it's a hobby you thought one day you'll pick up. Something that's going to give you those feelings of excitement to not replace the feeling of emptiness, but to move into that spot. That those are really the way. And also you're going to have some empty space to maybe get some organizing done. This is an excellent time to realize that you have more closet space than you've ever had before. Even if you're not going to say, okay, you're out of the house for college, we're turning your room into a something else. No, nobody's suggesting you do that, but you will But have, you can if you want. You can if you want. It's your house. <laughs> it's your house. But, but at the very least, you could utilize some closet space and give yourself 
an opportunity to really create a nice organized look in your own closet. And it's the perfect time to purge their items, get rid of what you don't think they're going to need anymore, and then box up all those trophies, all those running medals, all those high school memorabilia, label it, put it away, and put it up in a closet somewhere and really reuse that space to where it functions, whether it's a new extra guest room or an art studio or a workout space, reusing the space. It, you can't leave it as a shrine because they move on, they graduate college, they get apartments, they move on with their lives. So you hope. I think it's a tricky thing and it just takes time. I yep. think it ju- time heals this. Just yes. be patient with it. Absolutely. Maybe talk to some of the other moms that are in the same class. There's a graduating class of moms, just there's a graduating class of kiddos. So that was one thing we wanted to touch on, just so you know that we're thinking of you guys yes. that are going through this right now. The other thing is when you find that you're having more time, you might be finding that you're turning towards <laughs> binge watching. Or if, like in the case with Christine, you just saw something crime related and thought, I've got to watch every little bit of it. Oh, yeah. But, but let's talk about your current fascination, presumed innocence. Yes. And the way that you and your daughter see it so differently. Yes. Which goes to show what you. What network is this on, by the way? This is this a series. This is on Apple okay. TV. And um, if you've seen the original with Harrison Ford. Which I have. Okay. I think that was the 90s. Uh-huh. Anyway. Um It was amazing. Now, it was a movie. It wasn't a series, but it was probably one of my favorite movies of all time. You have the twist at the end and affairs and all the things that go along with a crime drama. So, of course, they remake it like they do everything nowadays. Sure. And on Apple TV, they have a new series called Presumed Innocent with Jake Gyllenhaal, who I absolutely adore. I love him so much. Hard to not love Uh, him. I just, I have always been a huge Jake Gyllenhaal fan. So, of course, I was going to watch it, no doubt. So, my husband and I start watching it, and we both finally, we're two episodes in, and we both look at each other and go, what's just, what's wrong with this? What aren't we loving about this? So, we start discussing. I said, I think there's no chemistry between Jake Gyllenhaal and the woman he's married to. I think that was forecasting I think it just doesn't feel right it doesn't fit together I think some of the other casting of the district attorney was bizarre and he has I don't know it was just bad so we're talking about all this we even let it go for a few weeks where we didn't even watch it because we're like but then our daughter came over and said oh my God, I'm watching the best thing on Apple TV. It's called Presume Innocent. And we both just started laughing. We're like, really? You like it? She's, oh my God, it's so good. I'm like obsessed. And I'm like, okay. So we decide to start finishing it and thinking it's got to get better. She loved it so much, but it didn't. And we both still, we went through, finished the whole thing and we were both not loving it. And she still loved it. And so we went back and watched the original movie, and we were like, there you go. End of story. No comparison. But let me ask you this, because when I, sometimes when I watch things, like, for example, if I would sit my daughter down in front of the Harrison Ford version, she would look at Harrison Ford and be like, oh, he's, such a, he's such a man. Like, he's a grown-up. Yeah. Versus Jake Gyllenhaal, it doesn't matter to me if their age is the same at the same time. He just seems so young to me. Is it because yep. I'm so old? I don't yes. know. I don't think my daughter looks at Jake Gyllenhaal and says, he's just an old man. I just think that it's such a different, it's hard to put into words, but these, but reboots are so sticky because they try to make them so dark. Yeah. The new series versions of these things, everything's a series. So it's super dragged out. And super it's so, dragged out. And everything's so dark and the music play. And I normally love when music, is a star of a show along with everything else. I think that music is so important to me that, but some of these like remakes, these very dark, I can't remember them from one from the other, but there's a lot, there's a lot of reboots, remakes. Uh And I think it's just a generational thing. Back when you saw the original one with Harrison Ford, it was a different time. It was a different 
they had to tweak it to make it more modern. I think right. that's what part of the thing is. It's it gets away from the original thing. Yes. To make it more modernized to fit today's languages, to fit today's whatever's going on in society. They have to make it fit with now. But everything has a twist these days. Yes. So back then, back in my day, if something had a twist, it was a really big twist. Yes. You just you didn't, you didn't see, see it, it coming. coming. I was just gonna you say did not see it coming. No, no. So that's and I remember the movie The Jagged Edge was like Oh that. my god, another favorite. <laughs> another favorite. I you could just go didn't on see it and coming on. and everybody's talking about it later. And there weren't the spoilers, obviously, because we didn't have social media. They did it with Fatal Attraction. They did a reboot on that. It was terrible. I'm sorry. I thought it was terrible. But you can't beat the Glenn Close, Michael no, you Doug- really can't. Douglas version. I don't care mm-hmm. how you try to do it. it. The same thing. I felt the same thing. They tried to redo Fatal Attraction. We watched maybe a couple episodes in, and we just never... I, I mean, it just doesn't... I think when you see an original of something, like... Kids, nowadays kids, yeah. they don't even, like, my daughter, they won't really remember that, that, in my opinion, they don't, it doesn't have the wow factor that it did back in those Oh, yeah, days. that's, yeah, exactly. Social media, it's next, next. It's right. not, we didn't have that, so, anyway. Let me tell you a funny thing that happened today. My coworker at my job, who you know, his name is Amadeus, he said to me, he said to me today, what's a good thing I can binge that's already over? And I said, what do you mean it's already over? And he starts naming some things. What about like Only Murders in the Building? I said, that's fantastic. It is good. But they're starting a new season, so it's not over. I said, but what's the problem? By the time you get caught up, the new season will be done. He said, I don't know. I just, but then they might make another season still. I'm like, I don't think so on this one. He said, I just, I'm to the point now where I don't want to watch anything that has Another season coming. I want to know I can watch it all at once. And that's so different than the way we grew up. Yeah. Not not that he's younger. He's not. But the way we grew up is you waited a week to watch something. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the appeal. Now it's if I have to wait. Right. If it's not overdone, that's a wrap. The season and the series finale has already occurred. It's, uh, I don't want to get hooked on it until it's really over. See, and for me, I can't. When they do another season, but it's like a year and a half later, yes, I have hard to get no back into it. memory of what how it ended. None. Right. Zero. I, I'm like that week to week. I make my... <laughs> you have to week. watch the preview. I have to watch the preview. Yeah. Even if a day goes by, let's say it's something that is all out. I still have to watch the, the previously on the I last episode. Yeah. And the reason I want to do that, too, is sometimes they go back weeks, what? Months, right. months, years, years back. Yeah. And the reason they put it in the previously on is because they know they're going to refer to it in that particular episode. So I feel like you got to watch those, but it's just a different way to watch. It's a different way to watch now. By the way, you are looking beautiful. Your skin is back to the way we know and love it. So let's talk, let's go there. You had an issue and I think it's something we should share because I, I don't personally have a lot of issues with that. I'm not very sensitive, but people who do have sensitive uh, skin will relate to this like yeah. nothing else. Also, I know you all are sick of hearing about Donnie Osmond, but you have to remember this came out on my face the Monday before we were it going was like to a rash. the con- concert. It was a rash, but it was a weird rash because it really didn't itch, but it was ugly and it was annoying And I had no idea what caused it. I'm like, nothing, I don't believe I've changed anything, whatever. So, of course, my goal was I've got to get rid of this by Saturday. Right. How can I get rid of this by Saturday? And this was like early in the week. It was Monday. So I literally was like, time is a ticket. So (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. So... Also, yes, through my youthful years, I always dealt with acne. That I can handle more. But as you get older, they're like, "Mm, once you're out of menopause, you don't break out. You don't. There's not for me. But that doesn't mean there won't be for anybody else. So what I did was I didn't know where it's called perioral dermatitis. Okay. And I had no. You went to a dermatologist. uh, Yeah. I went to the TikTok dermatologist oh, first. Yeah. Okay. I did that. And I don't ever go on TikTok. I'm not a TikToker. But when you're 
desperate times call for desperate measures because I first Googled it and I didn't get what I was looking to achieve. Okay. So, of course, I did make an appointment for a doctor, a dermatologist. I didn't just try to doctor myself. I'm not like that. But I could, of course, you can't get in right away. I couldn't get in until Wednesday or Thursday, which, by the way, when you have Donny Osmond on Saturday, what are they uh, thinking? I was like, are you kidding me? I can't get rid of it in that much time. I'm going to have to start doctoring myself. Surely somebody with poison oak can move over and right. let you have their appointment. <laughs> right. So I, what I did was I decided I am going to figure out, number one, what caused this, and number two, how can I at least make it better enough for Saturday night that I can cover it up with makeup. Okay. So I went on TikTok and put in perioral dermatitis because I knew okay. that's what it was just by the pictures okay. that I was looking at. I 100% knew that's what it was. So by the way, they say, I have to tell you, that it only hits women between 20 and 45. So imagine how annoyed I was at that because I'm 61. And so I'm not even in the realm of them talking mm, about this. So you're a miracle. I'm a miracle to be able to get this <laughs> at 61. So on TikTok, they actually do have dermatologists. And I'm not trying to say go on TikTok right. to get healed. We're because, always going to tell you to see your healthcare professional. Oh, always. Because, but they are doctors on yeah. there who have decided to do TikToks yeah, on to promote problems going on. So all you have to do is I put in that word and a million things came up, including people that had it, but they were so young with such beautiful skin still that I just scrolled through them because yeah, that's they, annoying. Were, they had a little patch here, a little patch there, but they were young. Yeah. So I wasn't really going to take advice on my skin being older so I went through and saw some of the dermatologists. What caused it? Okay, there's a myriad of things I had been doing that caused it. One, any kind of steroid use, meaning nasal steroids, which I've been on for years due to Flonase, yes. all those. Oh, that's right. For that's years. Okay. okay. And I literally two weeks ago said, none of this is working. I'm going to stop doing them. And that's what happens when you stop a steroid abruptly. So that's oh one thing. Oh, my gosh. You're a detective. I was a detective. You're like house. I'm like house. <laughs> so the second thing was I had been putting steroid on my face when it first started before I even knew what it was, like back, like literally when it first started like a month and a half ago. Okay. So you were thinking... A steroid Steroids. will take this down. Yeah. It's and it worked. It took it down. Okay. It worked great. But they, what you don't know when you don't go to a doctor, because that was before I went to a doctor, once you stop the steroid, it comes back and it comes back a hundred times worse. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, learned that. Then, of course, over exfoliating, which I had been doing. I had been doing exfoliating pads. I've been using Retin-A at night. I had been, you name it, exfoliating scrubs on my face. Anything to exfoliate, thinking the more the better. And you're not supposed to exfoliate that hard because then your skin rebounds and mm. you're hurting the skin's barrier. Rebound is a real thing. Yeah. Rebound can happen from different, we even heard about it with Visine. Right. You use too much Visine or red red eye drops yep. and the rebound effect comes it comes back stronger yep so also what i saw is you have to start from scratch which if you know me that's very hard for me to stop doing you literally have to stop doing everything you've done everything no mm -hmm. matter what it is thank god i was always already using vanny cream which is a fragrance free face wash so i could still use that because no fragrances no para parabens and sulfates. You really have to read the products. Yeah. So I did all this before I saw the doctor. Okay. okay. So I no makeup. So that whole entire week, I wore absolutely no makeup because... So let me guess, you also didn't leave the house? I didn't leave the house. <laughs> I didn't leave the house Do I know you? <laughs> for one full week to give my skin a chance to breathe sure. and not use anything harsh uh -huh. on my skin. Then I went to the dermatologist. Okay. I actually made two separate appointments because 
I'm a firm believer in getting a second opinion. A lot of people don't. Either they don't have the time or their insurance won't pay for it, which is terrible. But I feel like every doctor sometimes has their own opinions. And one isn't wrong and one isn't right. It's just I want to know what their opinions are. Yeah. So the first doctor I went to told me it was perioral dermatitis. She even thanked me for diagnosing myself. And she wanted to give me an antibiotic and an oral antibiotic. And I was a child of the 70s who was on antibiotics all the time. I had earaches, strep throat, you name it. I constantly was on antibiotics. So I finally took an initiative like 10, 15 years ago that unless I'm dying and I mean dying. I'm not doing any more antibiotics, and I'm going to rebuild my gut and, okay. and do that. So I was not happy when she said that. Sure. I'm like, this is not pretty, but there's got to be a different way. And she's, no, there's no other yeah. way. It'll clear it right back up. But what she didn't know on my TikTok <laughs> doctoring was that a lot of people said this certain antibiotic causes a lot of stomach problems Mm -hmm. a lot like not fixable america we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights life liberty and the pursuit of happiness by honoring your sacred vocation of business you impact your family your friends and your community at grand canyon university our mba degree program is 100 percent online with emphases in business analytics and finance to help you reach your goals Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Stomach problems once they start. And also, once you stop taking the antibiotic, it can come back right away again. So I'm like, why am I doing this if it's going to come back? Let me figure this out and try to do it on my own. So then I went to a second opinion, and she said the antibiotic would be the quickest, but I can give you antibiotics that you just put on your face Topical. Mm-hmm. which I said least yeah it's not going into you know, your stomach right. lining and it was a different antibiotic than uh-huh. you would take orally so I took that and I also took the oral antibiotic in case there was an emergency you mean you filled it you didn't take I it. filled it I never took it okay. but in case it got yes. really bad because it can get really debilitatingly bad I okay. just I feel like I had a mild case of it. Mm -hmm. So I did all that. But then I went and just did my own homework and really took it on. It's almost like a job. How am I going to clear this up? So I took a little bit from here, a little bit from there. Some of the doctors, some of the people who had been dealing with it for a long time. And I did it, started doing it on my own. And I cleared it up all on my own. Now, Will it come back? Yes. They say once you have this, it's a lifelong thing that you don't know why. You may go back to using retin-A and all of a sudden three weeks in, you're going to get this again. And you also have to allow for the possibility that it was just a time thing, that it was cured by just time going by. Yes. You're saying that because we're not doctors. We're not doctors. And also, I quit exfoliating. Yeah. That, that's so, irritating. Can I tell you a very quick story about me and Retin-A, which I still use the Retin-A, but what I didn't know, and I feel really dumb now, but back when I had eyebrows before Mother Nature <laughs> decided older people start to lose them, but I used to go get them waxed. But what I did not know is you should never oh, do that if no. you were on Retin-A. And two skin size, just oh, pieces, just, gosh. oh, but, oh, please never do that. Yes. You are doing a retin-a or retinol product you cannot go and get your eyebrows waxed you can't your skin is so thin and sensitive and it's ready to peel yes that it's just going to take two layers instead of one oh my it's god just bad. yeah okay please let's return to your story yeah no i just quit exfoliating yeah. i went extremely extremely gentle so i'm just going to show you and explain for those who don't have the patreon i'm going to explain what yeah. i did because so many people ask and i want to just go over quickly and most of these were on amazon just so you know they weren't like anything really crazy expensive at all you're a big proponent of 
pass it on. If you get a piece of information, you like to share it. And this I, is not you're selling a product. This no, is and I no one's paying me for anything. I just feel like this can be very debilitating when you can't wear makeup, uh -huh. when you feel bad about yourself, when you look at yourself yeah. in the mirror, when you have a job like mine where I do a lot of videos, I do a lot of content for my business. And so it's important to figure out not only how to clear it up, but how to prevent it from coming mm. back. So the first thing is Vanny Cream. I've talked about this before yeah. when we did other segments. It is- Hold it right on up there. I, I am telling you, this is the be all end all. I used it way before this happened. So this was a no brainer Let me read me. the label for everybody who doesn't have the video version of it. Vanny Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. So there's no dye fragrance. No. Uh, no lanolin, no parabens, no blah, 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 formaldehyde. And it's non-comedogenic, it's yep. gluten-free. So this is your cleanser. That's my cleanser. Okay. And I don't do any double cleanses anymore. It, the big thing is double cleanse, use an oil. But one thing I found out is too much moisturizing also irritates oh, this. Oh, okay. So if you're using, the big trend was to use Vaseline on your face. That was causing a lot of people to get perioral dermatitis because it's too thick sure. and it's too occlusive. Sounds cloggy. So it's very cloggy and this type of thing doesn't like, people think, oh, it's flaky, it's a rash, I'm going to, but it's almost the opposite. It doesn't want heavy, thick moisturizers okay. on it. So the next thing, which I love this for you, only okay. because we know I'm not a huge sweater, okay. but she is. Yes. I had already been using this, something like this, for my eyelids because of my dry eye, okay? What the heck is it? It but, doesn't even look like a bottle I recognize. But this gets rid because perioral dermatitis is a type of bacteria. Okay. And that's why they give you antibiotics because it's a bacteria. So this, after I shower, I get out, I just take it, shut my eyes, and spray it on my face. Let it dry naturally. Don't try to pat it dry. What the heck? And it is an antibacterial. So if you go to the gym, you take it, and you spray it. It's called Skin Smart Antimicrobial yeah. Facial Cleanser. Cleanse away bacteria without drying skin. Yes. Okay. And so if you're a person who runs or goes to the gym, yeah. you get out of the gym and you just spray this on your face because sweat equals bacteria a lot of yeah. times. And so I've been doing this twice a day, once in the morning after I've done everything else, uh -huh. before I do any kind of prep or whatever. And then at night, because I have been wearing makeup again, I remove my makeup and then spray this right away so that I'm getting having no bacteria. A counterpoint on that is I'm not big on a lot of the antibacterial because I think natural bacteria is a good thing. But if what you're saying is um, when you get out of the shower, just to do it around your face area. But I was thinking it was going to be one of those cleanse things like when you go have surgery and they give you no. that stuff to use in the shower. No, no, this is like I keep it next to my toothbrush. Okay, and, just, and it looks light. And it's light and it's Amazon. And by the way, there's other brands. It's the same thing. It's just Even an the eye one I was yeah. using is the same exact thing. I could have sprayed that all over my face, but I decided to try this. But so far, so good. That's all I'm going to say. So mm -hmm. far, so good. When I was in, I want to say ninth grade, we had a home ec class and they brought in this model to talk to all of the girls about all of the things, right? Beauty related, not the birds and the bees or anything like that. And she told us never to touch our face. And to this day, yeah. I have such a phobia about touching my face yeah. and anyone else touching my face that it was actually a joke between my husband and me during our wedding photos because I cannot stand to have anybody's hand, yeah. including my own, touching my face. That's good though. That's well, a good habit because the bacteria on your hands mm -hmm. You put it on your face. But this, I noticed the label of this product talks about blemishes. So I'm yeah. thinking if you have a teen with acne or if you oh, are somebody yeah. who has adult acne, yeah. that's yeah. where that could it's, come in. It just Now my nose itches because I don't right. want to touch my face. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is, and by the way, this I used pre this whole thing going out because I do still break out even though I'm postmenopausal and my friends laugh at me because when they get a zit, I would run over and put this on their pimple 
and the next day it would be gone and they'd be like, what the heck did you put on my face? This is called Dela Cruz Maximum yes. Strength Acne Treatment with yes. Sulfur. So sulfur when you have this. It is the be all end all. Okay. okay. Like I said, I used this before just for spa treatment. And you can leave it on 15 minutes, wash it off. You can leave it on overnight, whatever, on to spa treat. But what I read was to get the soap. So I did. They have a soap. And after I used my vanity cream, I would just lightly soak this up and leave it on as a mask for less than a minute. Sulfur soap. Yeah. And then wash it off. And I swear this made all the difference in the world. Sulfur soap. Yes, because whatever was going on in my face needed this ingredient because literally the next morning I woke up and it was almost all gone. Oh, good. So there's something to do with sulfur. I'm not a doctor, so I can't get into the scientific Uh part of it, but it really did work. And these are all Amazon, like I said. The next thing is Dr. Sam's, and I used her before all this happened, but I have to tell you, I wasn't using her consistently. I was switching it out with other moisturizers, which I probably shouldn't have been doing because this has no fragrance, no bad things in it, and probably some of my other moisturizers had things that weren't that great. So I went strictly to her, and I am going to tell you now, if you've never heard of her, Google it. She... All her products have no fragrances. She has rosacea herself, even though this is not rosacea, but it is a skin irritation. And she has, this is the intense, but there's a lighter version. All her products are amazing. So I went back to using this every night before I went to bed. And you I, replaced I, the other products yes, you use? Yes, I just okay. use this moisturizer. So no other moisturizer. And I don't know what this stuff is. It's called... <laughs> Sicka, sickle fate plus from a bean or however. Avena. Avena. A V E N E. I mean, I'm not familiar with that. It's drugstore. I mean, sickle you fate. can get it at Walgreens. Well, then how did you know to get this stuff? Because someone on TikTok <laughs> said this stuff is from the drugstore. I don't know what's in it. They also said the same thing. But if you are having a flare, dab it on. You don't put this all over your face, by the way. This isn't something like a moisturizer that you put on. It's, it's like, more like diaper cream. It says restorative protective cream, which yeah. makes me think it's more like a diaper yeah. cream. And so you get it around your nose and around your mouth. That's yeah. why it's called perioral d- dermatitis. So I, w- I did get it around my nose. So I took this at night, would just put it all over mm-hmm. my nose and all over here and went to bed. And I am not joking when I tell you, like I said, I don't know what's in it. I don't know why it works, but it works. And I'm sure it would work for other things like scars and any kind of disruption you have to the skin. Why am I trying to read the label? I know darn well I don't have my readers on. You can't read any of these labels. There's no chance. No. Okay. But. Sickle fate. Yeah. With a C. I, I would try to read it too. And I even have my contacts in. But anyway. So these are just uh, my and my son. Now sunscreen, I'm going to go into really briefly. Please I've do. been using not mineral sunscreen. I've been using the other kind. A huge no, a huge no to use chemical sunscreen when you have a flare of this or even afterwards. They're like, just stay away from it. So thank goodness I had already had some sunscreen that was mineral and I just went to using that. But I have to be honest with you, and I know this isn't a popular opinion, but for two full weeks, I used no sunscreen. I just was so worried what would make it flare again. And I've read that and I've seen on TikTok and everywhere else that once you have this, it's it messes with your mind because you think everything is going to flare it again. Mm -hmm. And so you really are extra careful. And Also, what I learned from this whole experience, the first person I talked to said it's stress, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one, I don't know about any of you out there, but I hate when that's the first thing people go to. We're all under an amount of stress. If it were stress, I would have looked like that for the last 20 years of my Mm -hmm. life. I would have looked like that through COVID. I would have looked like that. I, now, listen, was I stressed that it would still look like that by Saturday with Donny Osmond? Yeah, you could have been Hell stressed about it. to the yes, I was. 
Listen, I we've talked about this, about you even use the term about, and not necessarily these doctors, but there is a bit of gaslighting that yes. happens with doctors. Yes. And I even, after our conversation, pulled up a little bit of some numbers here. So listen to this. When we are speaking with our healthcare professionals, this one study found physicians interrupted the patient in 67% of encounters, and the interruption often occurred after a median of 11 seconds, with some providers interjecting within three seconds, yet others waited a lot more. So what they're saying is, the listening, the the amount of how long the doctors actually are listening to you and what your research has provided. And listen, I get it. If I'm a doctor and I've gone to medical school and you want to sit across from me and tell me what TikTok told uh, you or WebMD, yep. I'm going to be on the defensive. the defensive. Yes. But there is, but you have to temper that with a 61-year-old woman knowing her own body and knowing that the research that she's done feels very much like what she's come up with. I think we've all had that experience where we felt like we knew what was going on with yes. us and we've been told it's stress yep. or menopause yep. or age. So the lesson to be learned here isn't don't believe your doctor. It's get a second opinion if you feel you should Yes, and trust yourself. Yep. Know that what your own body, like I know my own skin and I know I knew exactly what caused it. And it was the steroid use of the nose spray and of the facial the over exfoliation and the over exfoliation. And by the way, in my drawer, I had been microneedling at home. And one of the ones I use came pre where you use it and then throw it in the garbage when you're done, which I love because I'm so worried about getting cross contamination and bacteria. But the problem is it was an exfoliating product. Okay. I thought it was a moisturizing. Pro I thought I was putting hyaluronic acid back into my skin, but it was an exfoliation. Uh, I and I didn't know because they had actually- you were pounding I was pounding the, And so that's why I was a little annoyed when someone said it was stress. Mm. Because yes, I think, yes, I think stress is real. I think stress can wreak havoc when what is stress related and what isn't. Mm. And I felt like this definitely wasn't stress. Now, the minute I thought, okay, I've got to find a way to calm down so I'm not stress inducing it. And then the concert Saturday, I got to find a way to, you yeah. know, you have to find a way to say, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay. I'm, I literally have to pancake my face. Right. I'm going no matter so what. Learned, I have to wear a hat. We learned on a past a episode scarf. that nobody's going to judge you if you do the pancake makeup. I'm like, okay, I'll wear a scarf on my a face. Scarf. I'll wear a mask. All people of a sudden, think be, I have COVID. People I don't know. Think you're a I was like, I was like trying to figure out what's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. So I just think that getting a second opinion, listening to your own body, and knowing that don't please go to a, a regular MD. Do not. You can go on TikTok and get some ideas, which is what I did, mm -hmm. but. I wouldn't go on TikTok for real medical advice. There are people on there that were Please like don't. asking heart attack stuff. I'm like, if you think no. you're having a heart attack, go to the hospital. So yeah, a rash, I, a rash, a is rash, different. yes, a mole, I mean, no. I mean, there are different things you can, you, but you do always want to be your own advocate. If nothing else, take that away from this. Yes, this. be your own advocate. And some of those great products. One of the things that we love is when you do share. So if you have something like that you swear, by all means, you can let us know. We have this fantastic community on Facebook. It's free to everyone called the Ladies Only Facebook. It's uncluttered and unfiltered, ladies only. We've got a lot of things going on right now, so I don't want anyone to get confused. So let me try and simply go right. through it. We never want you to feel left out. Right. Everybody is welcome to be a part of that, as long as you are a woman and are a mature woman, and we're going to let you into that group. We also have our regular social media, and now we have something new that you've probably heard about a time or two, and Christine mentioned it, our Patreon, which is, it's like a way where you can be a member on patreon.com where you are supporting us, and we do little videos that, you know, you'll get to see this instead of just hear us talk about it. Those are the things. But you know what the biggest and best thing you could do? By, and it's the biggest compliment to us, and it's the biggest help to our show is to share us with one friend. Yes. When you tell even just one girlfriend, sister, cousin, sister-in-law, 
about uncluttered and unfiltered, it, it, it's proportional, obviously. It exponentially helps us grow. Those reviews, those stars, we don't understand them, but we know they're that important. They, they're important. So if you can leave a review, if you can do some stars, that's always very much appreciated too. But really, we want you to be looking out for yourself. Yes. And also, I, I think, you know, we talk about everything. We talk about what's going on in our lives so that we can help. If you're suffering with this yourself, no, I, I cured it myself. <laughs> yeah, but you might not be, but you might go to lunch tomorrow right. with someone who is. Right. And then you can help them, you know, at least... By using some gentle products, still going to the doctor, finding out. Because, by the way, there are so many facial skin conditions, which I've learned through this whole experience. So don't try to doctor yourself when it comes to that, because you may think you have this, but really it's something else. And you don't want to treat it in a way that it shouldn't be treated. So that's why I always say start off by going to a physician to make sure that is what it is. But know that in your heart, you know what's going on in your own body, and you're going to come, you're going to fix it because you're going to figure it out what's going on. Don't let anybody tell you you don't know what you think. Right. Open yep. to medical professionals with the education and the expertise to be corrective in a case where you're not. Right. Be open to that right. by all means, but, but don't underestimate yourself. And when it comes to you taking care of yourself, that is the number one priority, yes, right. obviously. With that feeling like we're all just going nuts and getting old and there's nothing we can do about it, you can let it go. And don't look back. Ready to level up your career? Text DISH to 44043 now to dive into a world of exciting technician opportunities at DISH. From cutting-edge technology to a supportive work environment, DISH offers the perfect platform for your success. Connect with us today to discover how you can be part of a dynamic team driving innovation. Connect today and join the DISH family, where innovation meets opportunity. Text DISH to 44043 to kickstart your journey towards a rewarding career.